beyond basic drawings. In this lesson, we'll talk about shape data, inserting fields, grouping shapes, inserting images, and working with layers. Chances are, if this is your first time learning Visio, but you've used SmartArt in a program like Microsoft Word before, you're thinking that Visio has more bells and whistles, but it's basically the same thing. If you thought that, you couldn't be more wrong. Although the SmartArt feature in programs such as Word give you the ability to create diagrams, they are basic and do nothing more than illustrations. They contain illustrations of data, but they do not contain data. Visio offers illustrations, but also data. In fact, part of what makes Visio so unique is that the data resides in the very shapes that you drag onto your screen. Let's learn how to find the data for shapes, then to add or edit it. Using the tablet PC shape from the last lesson and selecting it, go to the View tab, and in the Task Panes button, select Shape Data. You'll see this box appear next to your page in the drawing window. If the tablet PC shape we dragged onto our page actually represented a physical tablet PC, we could enter the data related to that tablet PC, such as the serial number, CPU, memory, etc. That data would be stored with the shape. If the shape data window is too small, you can resize it by moving your mouse to the edges or the corner, clicking and dragging it to make it bigger. Now that you know how to enter data into a shape, you might want some of that data to appear in the drawing. You can make that happen by inserting a field and then linking that field to the shape data. Start out by clicking on the shape. For us, it's the tablet PC. Next, go to the Insert tab and click on Field. You'll see the Field dialog box. Select Shape Data from the Category section of the dialog box. You'll see the fields appear in the Field Name section on the right. We're going to locate Serial Number in the Field Name section. So click on it to select it, and click the OK button. If you enter a serial number in the Shape Data tab on the right, it will appear below the shape. Needless to say, a huge part of using Visio involves working with shapes. So far in this course, we've learned to work with shapes one at a time to resize, add text, etc. However, you can also group shapes together to turn multiple shapes into a single unit for moving or modifying. Before we learn how to do this, click on the File tab. Go to New and select the Flowchart category. Then open the Program Structure template by clicking on the thumbnail. Click Create. Go to the Shapes window. Choose the Cloud Stencil and drag it onto your page in the Drawing window. Next, drag the function or subroutine stencil onto your page. Use the dynamic grid to line these up in the center of the page. Next, drag to create a bounding box around these shapes. To do this, hold down your left mouse button and drag to create a box around the shapes. At the moment, I'm still holding the mouse button down. Now release the mouse button and you can see that the two shapes are selected that have their own bounding box around them. With the bounding box around the shapes, go to the Home tab, and under the Arrange section, click on the Group drop-down box. From the drop-down menu, click on Group. The blue border around individual shapes is now gone. This lets us know that the shapes were successfully grouped. You can now apply borders or fills, add data, or anything that you can do with individual shapes. To insert an image into a drawing, go to the Insert tab and click on Pictures. This will allow you to search for local images to insert into your drawings. Locate the image you want to insert. Click on it to select it and then click on the Open button. You can then move the picture around your page or use the bounding box to resize it. If you have the picture selected, you can see the Picture Tools Format tab. You find the image adjustment tools that are common to all Microsoft Office programs under this tab. You can adjust the brightness, compress the picture to reduce the size, rotate the image, crop the image, etc. Take some time to explore the image tools that Visio gives you. You can also insert Microsoft Office clip art, images you find using Bing Search, and images from your OneDrive into a drawing. To do this, go to the Insert tab and click on the Online Pictures button. When you click the button, this window will appear. If you want to search for clip art, type in the description of what you're looking for. Use keywords such as coffee, woman, shopping, etc. We're going to type in coffee. 
Select the picture you want by clicking on it and then click on insert. The picture is now then inserted into your page. If it's too big, you can resize it. To search for a picture on Bing and insert it into your document, follow the same steps by going to the Insert tab and clicking on Online Pictures. Type in a keyword into the Bing search and press Enter. As you can see here, Microsoft lets you know that the images shown are licensed under Creative Commons. As defined by Webopedia, Creative Commons is a licensing concept created by Creative Commons that builds upon traditional copyright practices to define possibilities that exist between the standard all rights reserved, full copyright and public domain, no rights reserved. A Creative Commons license lets you dictate how others may use your work. The Creative Commons license allows you to keep your copyright but allows others to copy and distribute your work provided they give you credit and only on the conditions that you specify. For online work, you can select a license that generates some rights reserved or a no rights reserved button and statement for your published work. Make sure that you check the copyright before you can use the image. To avoid copyright issues, either use your own images, images that are in the public domain which have no copyright, or purchase images from stock photo sites where you receive a license with the image. In addition to inserting pictures from Bing Search, you can also insert pictures stored on your OneDrive. If I click on the Back to Sites button, it will give me the options. If you're signed in with your Microsoft account, you can see the OneDrive that will appear here. You can then browse photos on your OneDrive to insert them into your document. To insert images from Facebook or Flickr, click the Online Pictures button again to bring you back to this window. If you're signed into your Microsoft account, you can insert photos from Facebook or Flickr. Click on the button for Facebook or Flickr. You'll then be prompted to sign into your Facebook account, so type in your details and click Login. Once you're logged in, you'll see a screen that asks Office to authorise access to Facebook. Click Login with Facebook again. Once that's finished, click Done. You'll then see Facebook listed with all the other locations where you can search for pictures. If you wanted to add pictures from Flickr, click the Flickr button at the bottom of the screen to connect to your Flickr account. If you've ever used a program such as Photoshop before, then you're already familiar with layers. However, if you're not, don't worry. Learning how to use and work with layers isn't difficult at all, and it makes creating more complex drawings easier. First, it's important to understand what a layer is. By definition, a layer refers to a level on which you place drawings, graphics or images. The level is then stacked on top of another level. You can have as many layers in a drawing, graphic or image as you want. Typically, when you save your work, it is flattened to one layer and to reduce file size. As we stated, that's the definition. An analogy may be easy to understand. Think of a square, flat piece of glass. Let's say you glue pictures onto that piece of glass. You also have another piece of glass that's tinted a light orange. You glue that piece of glass on top of the first piece to give the picture and the glass an orange tint. Perhaps on top of that, you glue another piece with more pictures. You have three layers. This is an easy way to picture your layers in Visio. In Visio 2013, you will use layers to arrange objects and control properties for the objects in each layer at once. For example, you can decide if a layer is visible when the drawing is printed. You can also lock certain layers so they can't be selected or moved. To learn how layers work, go to the File menu, click on New. Select the Floor Plans category, then the Office Layout template. Click Create. Notice your stencils in the shape window to the left. Create a drawing of a room by dragging stencils onto your page. Note how I'm using the dynamic grid to line the window with the existing window. Now when I move the window over to the wall, Visio automatically rotates the window to snap to our wall so we can glue it. Playing with floor plans is an excellent way to become comfortable with stencils in Visio. Now I'm going to put some furniture into my drawing. As you can see, I've now finished my office layout. 
I have a desk with a computer on it, a chair, a small table, and a plant. Now let's work with layers in our floor plan. Select an object in your floor plan. It's preferable if you select one that you may want to move around or change later, as well as maybe add other objects too. We're going to choose to put our decorative objects on a layer, so we're going to select a plant. Next, go to the Home tab, and in the Layers drop down, click on Assign to Layer. The Layers dialog box appears. Here, you can choose what you want to put on this layer. As I've just mentioned, we want decorative objects. To do this, click on the New button. Enter a name for the new layer. Ours will be Decorative Objects. Click OK. You will now see the decorative objects listed in the Layers dialog box. Put a check mark beside it if it's not already there, as well as any other objects you want to appear in the new layer. Click OK when you're done selecting what you want to go on the new layer. Now go to the Home tab and under the Layers, click on Layer Properties. This dialog box will appear. For each layer in your drawing, you've got several properties. Visible will determine if the layer's shapes are visible on the page. Print will decide if a layer is printed. Active will make it so that all new shapes are added to a page or added to that layer. If more than one layer is active, shapes will be added to all active layers. Lock will prevent selecting or moving a layer. Snap and glue will either allow or disallow snapping or gluing shapes to shapes on a layer. Color will override the object's colors on the layer. If you don't choose this option, layer shapes appear as their original colors. As an example to show you how your layer properties work, uncheck the visible box for the decorative objects layer and then click OK. As you can see here, the plant is no longer visible. You can also click on any object in your drawing and assign it to a certain layer by going to the Home tab and clicking on Layers and then Assign Layer again.